Hey, my name is Matt Giordano, theyogimat.com. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're gonna to go over a common approach to get into trikonasana that actually might be limiting your range of motion. Not only does the approach cause less range of motion, but it could also be compressing your hip joint, leading to deterioration of the joint or hip impingement. First, let's go over the common ways that you might be led into trikonasana, and we can go over not only the downfalls, but also the benefits of going in this way. The common way to get into trikonasana is to start with your pelvis open or squared to the sidewall, the tailbone tucked, and the front leg turned out. Then to tip at the pelvis until you can't go anymore and then you place your hand wherever it goes. Now when you tip at the pelvis with the tailbone tucked and the hips open, at some point you get into a little bone on bone compression or the hip joint kind of runs into itself causing a potential hip impingement. As a result, you'll also just limit your range of motion. The rest of the way would have to come from side bending or flexion, lateral flexion of the spine. Okay, so the benefit of this would be if you're aiming for lateral flexion, a side bend, you could use this approach to get deep into the side body. Now, as long as you're not getting into hip compression, then that's a total valid way to go. Another potential benefit of this approach is maximum stability. From the tailbone tucking and the pelvis opening, you activate your glute medius minimus, those are your outer hip muscles, and your glute maximus, your back of your, your buttock muscle. And what that can do is help not only stabilize the posture, but also reciprocally inhibit, that means to uh, basically activate the opposing muscles of the muscles that are stretching, and that could relieve or release the stretch of the, in this case, the adductors. Those are two benefits that you could get from going into it this way, so long as you're not compressing at the hip. Now let's try a different approach to this posture. There's another way to get into it to gain range of motion. I turn my back foot, thigh, and hip in to start the pose. Then I tip at the pelvis. This has a great amount of range of motion at the hip joint when the pelvis is closed. And then take the hand to the ground. Once the hand's on the ground, here are the actions I like to take. From the right sit bone, the buttocks, I press down into the heel and almost outward. These two actions gain strength or activate the gluteus maximus, minimus, and medius, the muscles that I just spoke about, that create stability in the posture. When I do that, you'll see that the pelvis opens again, except now, as I open it, I don't go to the full amount so that I don't compress at all in the hip, and I can maintain range of motion. There's an opposing action of the back hip, the back thigh, bone and pelvis are actually trying to rotate back in to balance out the pressing down through the heel and opening of the front hip. The oppositional actions of pressing down and out through the front leg and rotating in with the back leg is going to create a massive amount of stability in the pose, which is something I personally value when I'm in a deep stretch like triangle posture. All right, I'm gonna get a little geeky on you. One of the reasons that I like this approach is that through these two oppositional actions, you create a facilitated stretch in the front adductor muscles. Um, facilitated stretch is activating the muscles that are stretching, which has many benefits, including increased flexibility. So what the, the way this happens is by pushing your heel down and out to rotate the hip open, that stretches the adductors. The opposing action of turning the back thigh in and rotating the hip down, if you're using the adductors to pull your pelvis closed against the opening of it, the adductors of the front leg engage, they ignite. Usually the adductors pull the leg toward the pelvis but in this case, because the leg is fixed and the pelvis is moving, the pelvis towards the leg is the adductors. Now you can use many muscles to do that. I like to try to activate the adductors of the front leg in order to close the pelvis. To sum it up, it's not necessarily the actions that cause the impingement, but rather the timing of events. So rather than tucking the tailbone and opening the pelvis to go down, close the pelvis, anterior tilt the pelvis, 
and see if you can get more range of motion out of it. Then you can apply the muscular actions afterwards once you are down there to the degree where you're not impinging the hips, of course. If you like techniques like this and you want more of them, you can visit theyogimat.com slash free where I have plenty of video blogs on there. In addition to the free videos, if you'd like to do a workshop on the hips, I've got a two hour long workshop called Hips Rock'em and Unlock'em available on theyogimat.com slash hips. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.